go ahead and get set up real quick. No problem. And we can make this move. Oh. 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 Is that a Louisiana flag back there? Nah, that's not what that is. <laughs> oh. Thought that was a pelican. It is. <laughs> oh. I'm messing with you. I'll be right back. You can hear me pretty good. Yeah, can you hear me pretty good? Yes, sir. Right on. Word. So let me get down right here. Okay. Word. So I was I was a little tickled or whatever when I when I went ahead and I looked in and I seen that the the. the the Gremlin dago on the emblem, and I was like, "Wait a minute, that G oh, yeah. familiar." You know? And then I was like, "Hold on, this this dude from where I'm from, <laughs> Grand Fam, yes sir. Yeah. I am from Gremlin. I live in Monroe. Yes sir. I live in Lake Charles. Well, I'm from Lake Charles. I'm currently living in Houston. Okay, that's what's up. We were just in Houston for the uh, U of H game. Yep, I seen you. You made your entrance and everything." Yeah, I did, I did, that's where I did the Moxley entrance. Mm -hmm. Right, right. But yeah, that's uh, I spent a lot. I spent a lot of time in Houston. My uh, pops lives out there now, so you know that's where I spent a lot of summers and whatnot. So I'm very acquainted with Ace Time. <laughs> you gotta put the time on there. Yeah, got the time. It's not town, it's time. H time. <laughs> T I N E. Yeah. I was I'm like, in uh, time. So, yeah. When I got out of the military, I, we moved here and everything. And um, first time listening to a local radio station, I was like, man, they playing all my childhood music. <laughs> right. Right. I, I didn't know how much like the music scene here influenced like my childhood and whatnot. Because I think right. about what eighth grade that's whenever i got into all the swisher house and all the other guys yeah and i was like why is this 
battery in this Walkman so daggone low. This music is too slow. What's going on? That's it. They're just slowing it down. Funny story. My brother uh, used to work with, uh, used to record with Lil Kiki. Word. Like he was on uh he was on a couple of tracks on the Don't Mess with Texas album. Cool. I remember having that. Um, so we are well ingrained into the Houston culture. Yeah, yeah. What shit, whenever you come out here, where you like to go eat at? Uh there's a what is it called? Bad Wolf Burger? What? Or something heard. like that. It's uh my dad's what used to swear by it. <clears throat> Until he ran into his health issues, but it had this got this chili burger that's just absolutely insane. Uh, we used to go. What was the place? Used to go to the Black Eyed Pea all the time when that was still a thing out there. But uh, there's this. Uh, the last time I was out there, there's this spot. Uh, God, I cannot remember the name of it, but it was like this dope brunch spot. It was when we were in that. It was when we were there for the U of H game. It was. Uh, I have to look it up because my homegirl recommended it to me, and it was absolutely phenomenal. I could probably find was it. it. Was it on the north side or the south side? Uh, I want to say it's the north side. Is it called the? It might have been called the new spot. I think that's what it's called, the new spot. It's a brunch spot uh, out there that was pretty good. And. It's just off oxtail and Ooh. just real like cuisine made. Oh, I'm out dope too. A couple places uh, that I that I you go to while I'm out there and um, Christian's tailgate downtown because uh, I'm a Bills fan. Well, Midtown, not downtown. It's in Midtown. But it's the official Bills backers bar for the Houston Bills backers. And uh, okay. went out there Sunday to watch, I think it was the Miami game when we were out. And uh, it's pretty dope, too. So it's a couple places out there that's pretty nice. I know. I've been, inter- I've been trying to find different brunch places because we started this thing up to where every Sunday we go find some place to eat brunch. And we just been going to all kind of different places and everything. So that one spot you're talking about, I'm at to investigate. See what's it's going on this spot. Sunday. It's called the new spot. I, I, I remember specifically because I wrote it down just so I could go back once I come out again, uh, which will be soon, hopefully. And uh, it was the bottomless mimosas are fantastic. They got orange, pineapple, like other kind of juices to go with it. Um the uh the wings are on top. Uh oh, I'm looking at pictures right now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's legit. Like there are some reviews that we saw when I wanted to go over to it that was like uh I don't know, but I was like, Yeah, let's let's go over there. I just want to check it out. We can't look at all the some of the reviews and believe them. You got to go check it out for yourself. And if it's bad, then you just say, you know what? I know not to come back over here anymore. Uh, looking, but, at this, looking at this picture is right next to a nail salon. So it's got to be good. Oh, it's. <laughs> yeah, buddy. It is, it is pretty nice. And it was packed when we got there. So, yeah. Like it was it was a spot that other people were trying to get to. And there's a I think it's one called the Cracked Egg in Houston. That's a good brunch spot too. Like Houston has so many great brunch places. They got uh, so yeah. many food places or whatever. I mean, everybody come here yeah. rant and rave about the turkey leg hut, and I was like, I got turkey it. leg hut. That's I mean, if if that's what you want, then fine. But you know, there's other places around there besides the turkey leg hut to go and check out because there's one. It's this real expensive like dinner place. Well, not real expensive, but it's pricey. And I cannot remember the name of it, but my homeboy swears by it. And every time I say I'm going to Houston, he's like, you've got to go here. Because it's one of those places that brings the meat to your table. Oh, okay. And then cuts it while, while they're there. Word. And just brings it, puts it directly on your plate. Mm. 
Uh, Something Day Brazil. Making me uh, making me hungry. <laughs> hey man, you can't talk to me about food places and places that I go to and not expect me to just. Hey man, I, I'm ahead. down for it because I, I I I like to eat myself. I like to eat. <laughs> I mean, you and me, we right there on the same wavelength with the eating part. That's mm-hmm. just you because know, I. I do I, I do football for Grandma State, like I call it football games. Either I'm in the booth or I'm on the sideline. Yeah. So whenever we travel and go somewhere, I got to find the dope, like local eatery. I don't want to go somewhere that everybody goes. I don't want to go somewhere where everybody's, you know, this is the place where a million people go to whenever they're in town. I'm like, show me the place that's off the beaten path. Mm-hmm. That a couple people in town know about, but it's real dope. Place where they make their greens and they don't pull it out of a can, <laughs> right? Like everything is fresh, and you know they, they it's made with love, mm-hmm. and we got to get it. Yeah, we got to get it in. So that that's the kind of stuff that I look for. That's why when uh, News Five was suggested, I was like, yeah, let me let me get up on that. Mm-hmm. I, I tell you, I tell you one place though here to be kind of weary of. Yeah, I'm gonna put him on blast. Um, Tyler Perry did his last little uh, stage play uh, run coming through Houston and everything, mm-hmm. and one of the local he had a performer in there that was local here to Houston that owns a place called uh, Crab Queens or something like that. So automatically, I had to take my wife to it because she's a big Tyler Perry f- fan and she loved the plays and all that stuff. So I took her to that. We we seen the guy, and we found out we had the restaurant. He had the restaurant or whatever, so we had to go. We had to go. So we go in there. The food is good. It's extra spicy and everything and whatnot. And um, hand the lady my card, and I leave for the weekend to go to Lake Charles to visit family and stuff. Sunday morning, I'm getting a call from the bank talking about somebody then jacked my card and went to the mall and bought some shoes at the gallery and shit. <laughs> So be wary of uh, crab queens. They they, they uh, jack your card and go spend money on shoes and stuff. Yeah, say no more. That's, <laughs> you've, yeah, not in that. I mean, the food was good. And then I was like, I knew it wasn't me because I don't damn well I don't go to the Galleria. Can't be that know. good. Hell no. I mean, I'm sure the food was good. Can't be that good. Right. <laughs> If your food that good, the way I'm gonna give you my card and let you go spend on spend it up on the town, then you need to be on Food Network or something. You don't need to be <laughs> jacking me for my card. You need to be out there do you know? You and Bobby Flay need to be doing your thing because you nah can't be that. Well, but I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we we have been jaw jacking here for a couple minutes, or whatever. But I do have an intro I need to hit. Uh, had to okay. hit the wickets and whatnot, so I'm gonna do that, and then we just pick up where we left off. Got but, it. What up, everybody? This your boy B Rob, and I'm back with another edition of the Random Rambles with Rob podcast. If you're a first time listener, I'd like to thank you oh so much for giving my show a try. And if anybody recommended you to me, I would like for you to reach over and give that person a crisp high five. But if you want to be socially cautious in these trying times with the COVID and all this other stuff, you don't have to do that. You don't have to come in and touch hands and back up and sanitize and get six feet. You don't have to do none of that. You just pick up your favorite social media app of choice and send them a well-crafted DM and tell them thank you for recommending you to me. Speaking of social media, you can find the Random Rambles with Rob on various social media platforms to include Twitter at 3 Show, Instagram at the 3R show and you can find interviews like this one and many others on YouTube by searching 3R show. You want to see me play some video games? You can do that on Facebook and Twitch. Search for 3R show and anything that I may have forgotten to mention. You can find it all on randomrob.com. Now, we, I'm probably not going to edit none of this out, but if you've been with us for the past couple minutes, you already see who's over here with me. And everything right now. And the way I find out about this man, because we share a fondness of a particular sport or a brand of entertainment known as professional wrestling. So to go back to what I was saying before, is just like 
Um, I've said it on many a podcast, and I just came to this realization here uh, not too long ago. I like professional wrestling, but there are people like you and many others that love professional wrestling. <laughs> Because, you know, seeing people do what you do and uh, meeting other people that do the things that they do, like uh, I, I historically said that I've been to places to people to where they spent their last dollar on meet and greets rather than food for their stomach. So those people love wrestling. I, I just rather enjoy it. <laughs> so uh, what one of the questions that I got, because I... I got a group text with my homies and everything. We talk about wrestling and everything all the time. I was like, hey, I might have the opportunity to be talking with you today. And they shot me a question. And one of the ones is probably the most common ones that you might get is um, how did you fall into the trap of professional wrestling? How did you come to like it, love it, or whatever it is? <laughs> well, I remember being a kid. First of all, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, you, man. I remember being a little kid uh, in Louisiana. And I was watching TV with my uncle one day. And he put on professional wrestling. And I was hooked from day one. Just the over-the-top characters, uh, the, the 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 moves, the holes, you know, everything was just I was just drawn to it. So, you know, throughout my adolescence, I continued watching. It was almost like I was studying. You know, it was like I'm, I'm I'm paying attention closely to see exactly what's going on. What are they I doing? Mean, you are the professor, so. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean that's that kind of fits in with the gimmick, does it not? So it just all of it all kind of just grew organically from spending time with family and falling in love with it, and just being in love with it from that day forward. Word, and then like I got to tell my half of it or whatnot because you know. Not everybody listened to the podcast and, you know, might have new listeners, like I mentioned in the intro. But the way I fell into professional wrestling is not because of professional wrestling itself. Um, I come to know about it because of uh, Hulk Hogan, the actor and not the wrestler. So I seen him in hell a hell of bunch of movies and shit. And then I went to the video store one day and I was like, hey, that's that guy from that movie I watched. What is what is this WrestleMania? And then I was like, oh, and that's where it went from there. So I seen this dude doing movies and stuff before I even knew he was a wrestler. And then, you know, Hulk Hogan is what he is right now. But he did introduce me to it. And I think it's funny. You say uh, your uncle put you on and whatnot. For me, it was kind of stumbling across it. But it was kind of like my grandfather. He would uh, get into it. And then my grandmother wouldn't want him to watch wrestling because he'd get his pressure up because he'd be in there. Punching at the screen and everything, and we're not getting into it and whatnot. I oh, mean, that's one of the best parts about it is getting so emotionally invested into it that it's almost as if you want to fight the guy. I mean, yeah. that's part of the reason why we love it, you know, especially men. You know, we call it the male soap opera yes. because that's exactly what it is. We get so emotionally attached to the characters and the stories and everything that's going on. That you know, it it keeps us entertained. It keeps us enthralled, and that's <clears throat> part of the beauty of it. Mm-hmm. Is you know, it's so when it's good, and the story is being told well, both in and out of the ring, mm-hmm. then you're there and you're locked in, and there's nothing really better than that. So it's just it's it's so fun to be a part of this community even more now with all the stuff that I've done through social media, because the stuff that you're talking about with how you watched, you know, you watched a movie uh, with a wrestler. And then the next thing you know, you're into wrestling because you saw that, that, you know, that figure, that guy. And that's kind of the same stuff with me now where people are like, I haven't watched it forever. My kids are never really involved or interested in it. But then they see your videos and they're like, dad, what is he talking about? Mom, what is he talking about? And they want to get into it now. So it's more of using social media in order to not only ignite the fire in fans from long ago, but also to intrigue 
those who aren't really fans or don't know a lot about it mm-hmm. to want to look it up and look into it and say, oh, okay, this is what this guy is doing and this is what he's talking about. So it's yeah. really cool to be a, to be a part of it like that. So when you was talking about the emotional connection with the the art form that is professional wrestling and whatnot, when was the last time that you can remember that you was like so emotionally invested in a angle, a storyline, a person, a match, uh, just a moment in professional wrestling that just like had you just bugging out of your mind. I, I can tell you for me, it was um, two instances. One was uh, the retirement match with Shawn Michaels and uh, Ric Flair at I think uh, WrestleMania 24, or something like that. I get the numbers mixed up. That's why they don't number them no more because we get confused. <laughs> uh, but that one is just like the whole build up to that. If Flair loses, he got to retire. Well, not even though he didn't retire, but um, it was just like I dug the whole story. And then the second time, which many of listeners may know and makes me feel a certain way about a particular wrestler, The Undertaker, um, was WrestleMania 33 when he faced Roman Reigns. And then, you know, his match was over. He put his uh, cap and his, his uh, freaking gloves and his, all the stuff down in the, in the ring to signify, you know, that this may be the end. This is retirement, you know. And I was so emotionally invested in that one single moment that little trickle trickle in front of my wife, of uh, at the time, I think what about eight or nine years to where we've been through so many hardships, especially with me being in the military at the time, I, me retiring and separating. That was a lot of emotions. We had kids and everything. Never boohooed once, but this old rickety man went in there and he put his gloves and all this stuff down in the ring, and I, I streamed a tear and whatnot. And she's like, "You crying?" I was like, "It's sad," <laughs> you know. And then he would yeah. come back and do many more matches and piss me off to no end. There you go. I just, so, just, ooh, ooh. I never <laughs> believe anybody when they say they retire. Wrestlers yeah. don't retire. They just take breaks. They don't retire. Yeah. Legends yeah. never die, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, so there have been three times, to answer your question, there have been three times that I can think of where I've been so emotionally invested that uh, I may have had a little trick or trick. First time was when uh, Booker T won his first WCW World Championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the circumstances that surrounded it and the kind of surprise as, you know, as a younger fan uh, that came along with it. Just, you know, it, it tugged me emotionally because I grew up watching uh, Booker do his thing. And, I, I, you know, I grew up a huge fan. Uh, he's one of my favorites of all time. And I was just very happy to see him get that recognition. The second time was uh, Kofi Mania. Uh, when I Kofi won had that shirt on yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that um, because again, that was somebody who I'd followed since the beginning of his career with the WWE, and to see the journey that he had been on and all of the, you know, just he had gone through to get to that point was, you know, it was a very went in the champ. Um, just, just over that because I knew so he actually won the championship. You know, shot like Babe Ruth. Mm-hmm. Win, actually, in, he won, and yeah. It was one of those great moments in professional wrestling history. And uh, you know, I'll never forget it. Yeah. We we need to we need the Trinity or whatnot, because we got Kofi is the champ, was a champion. We got Big E currently the champion. And we need to sneak Xavier in there some kind of way or whatnot. But I'm content with him uh winning the king of the ring because uh, according to him is one of his yeah. big things that really got him into wrestling and whatnot, and kind of why he started wrestling because of the King of the Ring tournament. I think the him winning the ring uh, is going to be absolutely phenomenal. And the whole turn into an angle. Uh, you know, somebody comes along and the woods, you know, Kofi won it, Biggie won it. You know, you're just, you're the 
the weak link in the chain. You know, you're right. on the same level as your counterparts, and that could be the angle pushes him to that yeah. moment, and that would end up solidifying the new day as, if not the greatest faction in professional wrestling history, one of the the greatest factions mm-hmm. in professional wrestling history. Because when you think about it, they, they that would make them the only that would make them the only faction where everybody's in the world champion. Like everybody's been WWE world champion, you know. Uh, yeah. DX didn't have that. The NWO mm-hmm. didn't have that. Did it, but New one Day in that. part because they had so many daggone people. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it just it all depends, man, on you know whether or not they see him as a guy who could really hold the belt and carry the company. Because you know the WWE Championship is the bell cow. That is the, that is the you know that that's the that's the standard for them. The Universal Championship is getting there. You know Roman is putting it on that kind of pedestal to where it's becoming super prestigious. For a while, WWE Championship was the championship, and the Universal Championship kind of took a backseat. Now you can look at them and see them on equal footing, and. You know the WWE Championship still is super prestigious, mm-hmm. so you know, we'll we'll have to see exactly what it is they do with it. But it's just I, I think it'd be a really cool angle to follow with Woods uh, pushing to win the same championship that his counterparts have won mm-hmm. in the past. Yeah, because um, the only thing that he lacks, other than his uh, counterparts, uh, Kofi and Big E, is a, a singles title of any sort yeah and i believe the so, king of the ring is a step toward either doing his own singles um run as far as like maybe a u.s or intercontinental or maybe even eventually like what we're talking about the wwe championship yeah you know it's accurate you know he's still uh <laughs> I think he's a phenomenal performer and severe for what he's able to do in the ring. I, 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 I hope he does achieve those goals because I think that he far and away deserves it. Yeah, I 100% agree. Now, since you've been a wrestling fan for so long, and, um, you know, we we talked about this not too long ago to where, like, for the longest – WWE F or whatever you want to call it has been the big show, the only show in town for the most part is like on a recognizable level to where like even maybe within the last five or six years myself, I've just branched out into other forms of professional wrestling, you know, companies and everything like that. New Japan, MLW, all those other places to where like, We've been through the ups and downs, and it kind of feels like uh, the WWE is kind of on a decline right now as far as, you know, giving the fans what they want, um, utilizing certain talent in a certain way or utilizing them in the wrong way. And um, people are just kind of fed up with it. I mean, what are your thoughts on the current property that is WWE? I think that... The WWE is still a, a thriving product, mm-hmm. but I I think that for those who don't feel that way, there are alternatives to it. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the great things about where we are now in the professional wrestling, sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it, business, mm-hmm. is that there are so many different alternatives for whatever you like to watch or whatever you want to see. Mm-hmm. To where if you say, well, I don't think this is good. Well, then there's this. Well, I don't think that's good. Well, then there's this. You know, if you don't like WWE, there's AEW. If you don't like AEW, there's New Japan. If you don't like New Japan, there's GCW. If you don't like GCW, there's MLW. If you don't like MLW, there's ROH. The, the, if you don't like ROH, there's PWG. There's all these different companies and all these different brands that you could be watching and paying attention to. You know, there's uh, uh, NJPW has NJPW Strong, yeah, uh, which has a, a really nice card coming up. Two guys 
that I, I've grown to be fan, a big fan of uh, are going to be facing each other in like a, I think a six man tag. Uh, Chris Dickinson and uh, Barrett Brown, uh, mm-hmm. who are both uh, well, you know, well known with NJPW Strong, mm-hmm. and is, you you got all of these different alternatives that you could turn to. You know, I don't I think Dickinson that for hitting that girl over the head with the chair. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I, I don't think that there. For me, I still love the WWE product. Mm-hmm. You know, and they you could say that talent is being mismanaged and mis, misused and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. If that's how you feel, then that's absolutely fine. But it's you, you look at the product that they have, and there are people who are there that they are utilizing and trying to mm-hmm. push into. Uh, different scenarios that will give them an opportunity to really shine and thrive, uh, you know, with the WWE draft and NXT 2.0. You know, things are moving and shaking right now, and your people are going to be given the opportunity to kind of break out as stars. You know, I remember watching the Street Profits in NXT and to see where they went individually and as a tag team there to where they are now, sometimes it just takes time for you to finally find that place and that groove Mm -hmm. and for people to really finally latch on and say, hey, I like what this guy's going on. I like what this girl has going on. I like what they have happening. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I don't think that there's any, I, I don't have a problem with the WWE product right now. I feel like especially with the rebrand with NXT 2.0, mm-hmm. with the WWE draft just now uh, about to take effect, uh, I think, next week. Yeah. Uh, they're, yeah, they're giving, they're giving everybody an opportunity to kind of push the reset button mm-hmm. and see exactly what you can do and, you know, take the company into a new and stronger direction. And I just think it's an excellent time to be a wrestling fan right now. Word. I, I, I 100% agree with that. You you hit on uh, NXT 2.0. Uh, I need your opinion on two performers that I'm currently kind of digging right now. I want to see what your thoughts are. One being Braun Breaker and the other being Joe Gacy. Oh, I was hoping that you would give me a little Carmelo Hayes. A uh, real quick love with Melo. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's a given. That's a given. That's real a quick given. love with Melo is doing. Uh, congratulations to Carmelo Hayes on winning the NXT North American Championship. Uh, that that's you know it's just love it. Yeah. Uh, so Braun Breaker is the definition of blue chip. Mm-hmm. You know he is going to be the breakout star because we've already seen what he could do in the ring and that's just scratching the surface. He's good on the stick. He's good in the ring. He looks like a million dollars. Like this is, if you were to go into a laboratory and kind of try to build what you would want as, you know, the prototypical guy in sports entertainment, Bron Breaker would be that guy. Uh, despite the name, which a lot of people have problems with. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, I mean, that to me, you know, that's inconsequential. You know, you you don't make the, the – the name doesn't make you. You make the name. Yeah, and then he so, can get a, a cool know, nickname later and just kind of shed that. <laughs> as much as people talk – as much as people talk crap about his name, you know, you keep saying it because of just, just how good he is. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's – that's – Neither here nor there. Now, with Joe Gacy, it's a very curious mm-hmm. thing because there are a lot of people who don't, who aren't big fans of the gimmick, mm-hmm. and I can understand that. But as a I think I lost, I'm, I'm getting you, you're breaking up right now. You got the Paul's face on me. <laughs> You sounded like Megatron. You a robot. <laughs> yeah, it's still breaking up. Uh, 
I'm still recording on my end. It says like your, your signal is kind of low. What usually fixes this? If you log out, oh, there you go. Log out and come back in. <laughs> you, you see, you already you already had a master class in, in uh, electronics and whatnot. I, I was just, gonna tell you, I was like the thing that I had to switch over to the Wi Fi. Yeah. yeah. So the hopefully, thing, switching over to the Wi Fi will do the trick. Yeah, I was like, uh, you 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 did a master class in the electronics and whatnot because I was gonna tell you to do what it normally does to fix it, and that's log out and log back in. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully. They uh the, hopefully the Wi-Fi will fix the problem, but yeah, uh, Joe Gacy. You was talking about uh, Joe Gacy, already, yeah, yeah, Joe Gacy. We already knew what he was able to do in the ring if you followed the man's career. So that's not that's really not the question. A lot of people are worried about the gimmick and you know the whole presentation of Joe Gacy on NXT 2.0. But I, I, I said this in a space on Twitter not too long ago. I think that he will be okay. And he's a good enough performer to where, you know, just like Braun Breaker get past the name, Joe Gacy will get past the gimmick. Like yeah. it's he it, it's it's going to be okay. Like yeah. the, the way that they're building NXT two point oh, both of those guys will be absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. And then, like, what's weird with me and uh Joe Gacy or whatever, why I kinda kinda gravitate toward him and whatnot is be like you're a teacher and I have taught and everything, you know, when you're building your curriculum and everything and how you set up your, your class for presentation and whatnot. Um, especially like whenever I went through the training to uh, teach classes, they teach, they talk to you about pet words and pet words and pronunciation and alliteration and everything like that. When I listen to Joe Gacy talk, it's just like the words are crisp. I can understand everything he's saying. And it's just like, he doesn't stutter. He doesn't stammer and everything. And I'm just like, I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, the, as uh, one of the great one of the things about being a popular sports entertainer is that you're able to present yourself well in whatever gimmick you are given the chance to present yourself in. And uh, he has done that. And I think that he has owned uh what he has been presented with mm-hmm. and it's i it, i mean like again i think he's going to be absolutely fine just like Brian breaker so i don't really see you know, i think they'll both be okay i like i like the direction nxt 2.0 is going in uh especially with some of the gimmicks and their characters and the uh the guys who they have in the forefront the champions uh i think that they are on definitely on the rise yeah. yeah and it's it's definitely a changing of the old guard and whatnot all the old nxt tiers look like they may be on the way out and up because it's just like you can tell that von wagner of all people <laughs> is getting shine with uh kyle o'reilly and whatnot and then um it looks like to the trajectory of what you're saying is braun breaker may be the next nxt world champion and I'm not mad at that. But, yeah, he you know, just a little bit when I close my eyes and I listen to Braun Breaker talk, and it's like a weird You're metal Scott. of Scott and Rick just in there. I was like, oh, was, I'm waiting for him to say "Big Bad Booty Daddy" or something like that. <laughs> yeah, you hear Scott like that's mm-hmm. that's the way that it is. And to go back to Von Wagner, Von Wagner is a guy that they, they've been high on for a while now. So, I mean, he wrestled on SmackDown before. So it's not like he's super new. Like, there are, guys, there are people who they have that are at the Performance Center now that they are extremely high on from what I've seen and uh, what I've heard. You know, Von Wagner is one of those. Ivy Nile is another one who is just going to break through. And uh, really all of Diamond Mine. Mm-hmm. Oh. Ninja Vanish. <laughs> That's that's why I don't do this live, because things like this happen sometimes. I don't know. I hopefully it wasn't on my end. Will we get the? Can, can we get him back? Can we get him back, Jesus? Can we? 
Can we come back? Come on in. <laughs> but Von Wagner, I, I don't know. And I didn't even know that he wrestled on SmackDown and everything already. It's just, I am so in and out with the WWE product right now to where, like, I don't even watch Monday Night Raw. And I think we got it. Yay, you're back. I was sitting here talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, not exactly sure what happened. I just got kicked out, man. Oh, I, I was hoping it wasn't on my end, but sorry if that was. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, but yeah. You get kicked sometimes. It happens. It but happens. yeah, I, all of those NXT talents, I think they're going to do quite well. Uh, the older guard, you know, your Johnny Gargano's, your... Uh, your uh Tommaso Chapas. Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, yeah, those are guys who are, you know, the fork in the road is coming for yeah, the company. Even Pete Dunn. I want to see what's that's an interesting one. I want to see what's gonna happen with that. Cause I mean he already lost his little running mate with um what's the big dude with the draft, yeah. They yeah. yeah. Uh so they sent him to SmackDown. So it's gonna be interesting to see exactly what they do with Pete. Uh, I feel like he's going to be one of those who's going to be in the running for the NXT championship at some yeah. point. Because I, mean, I feel he's like still a younger he, guy. I think he would be a good challenger for Braun Breaker mm-hmm. uh, if Braun does become the champion after Halloween Havoc. So mm-hmm. we shall wait and see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, speaking of uh, your teaching background and everything and curriculum, one of the questions that I got from the homie was is uh. How often do you implement pro wrestling into your curriculum? <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of use it as an example from time to time, uh, using analogies and stuff like that, because I do have some students who are into it. Mm-hmm. And uh, as you've seen uh, through the content, sometimes they're in the videos mm-hmm. uh, with the wrestling content. So it just, it, it, it's, it all depends on what the lesson is, uh, if I can implement something, if I can use it as kind of a comparison in the lesson that the kids will be actually be able to understand and enjoy. Mm-hmm. So it's from time to time. It's not heavily in the curriculum, but I, I do use it from time to time. Word. Now, to get to your, uh, because we talked hella wrestling for the for the past couple minutes and whatnot, to get to... Yeah. You know what people may know you from and whatnot, and TikTok and all these other things. Yours comes from a place of a uh, a boredom and suggestion, pretty much. You know, twenty twenty, a lot of things shut down. We couldn't do a lot of things and whatnot. So you received the suggestion, and you kind of ran with it and whatnot. I mean, because yeah. shit, hell, we didn't have nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really have a whole lot going on. I mean, I was working. Uh, I was actually working during the pandemic for a company that was providing child care for healthcare workers in the area so that they didn't have to worry about getting babysitters or taking their kids to their grandparents or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and while I was doing that, one of my coworkers was like, you should get on TikTok. So I went ahead and gave it a try because I'd already had it once and deleted it. But once I got on it again and uh, found, uh, you know, because I love comedy and uh, I actually, my first two degrees, I have three degrees. The first two are in acting or in theater, I should say. Theater. So, you know, that's something that was kind of feeding the beast while, you know, everybody was at home, uh, you know, on quarantine or just going to work and then coming back. We we're all trying to find stuff to do, trying to find things to occupy our times. And a lot of teachers ended up on TikTok because we were at home. And so I, you know, I started doing that and things started to develop because of it, but then I started doing the wrestling stuff and more and more things started to to sprout and grow and grow and grow. And now we're at uh, 820,000 plus on TikTok. And then some of the crossover of that stuff going to Twitter and to Instagram and blowing up the way that it did. Uh, the Twitter is at, I want to say, like 14K just or like, that. like 13.9, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Instagram 
is about to hit 20. Mm -hmm. So it's all just grown. And I'm, I'm, you know, but what's great about it is that is the people who follow and the people who support and the people who are like, man, you know, we appreciate you doing this and doing this, and, you know, the entrances and the music and just the good vibes and just the, the smiles and the laughs because that's what it's about, man. That's why I started doing it during the pandemic because people were dealing with so much stuff that they needed a little bit of light uh, in the darkness. And that's what I've tried to be. Yeah. So this is this is funny. You're the second person that I've had on this show that thought TikTok was stupid and deleted it, but got it back and had some success from it. It was yourself and uh, Rain. She was she won the uh, SummerSlam uh, ring announcer joint. So I got yeah. To Shout to out to Rain Cruz, man. I love Rain. That's my girl. Yeah. yeah. And it, I thought it was funny because both of y'all was kind of in the same boat. I was like, I don't like this shit. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase it. And then wait a minute, they got yeah. this contest going on or this going on or whatever. <laughs> I need to get it back. <laughs> right. I mean, it was uh, you know, she getting her getting on TikTok and then winning that competition that gives you shows you exactly the kind of power that social media can have if used correctly. And if, you know, if you do you know, you know, you you do, and you just, you just be yourself. Yeah. You know, that's I've never tried to force anything. Any of the content that I've ever posted and stuff that I've ever done has never just me been. It's never been me just being like, oh, god, I hate this that I'm posting, but I'm doing it because I know that it'll get me likes and follows. But no, I'm just, I'm just being myself, yeah. and. You know, because I laugh at my content more than anybody else. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm doing it to entertain myself and to entertain support. everybody else. Yeah. Like it's just, it's really, you know, it, it, it's, it's to entertain, but I'm being entertained right along with y'all. So we're in this together. It's, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's a whole, it's, it's the whole coach speed thing, man. You know, well, it's, it takes a team. It's not just one person. It's all of us working together to get to a common goal. And I have to, you know, I can never take all of the credit myself. I have to give some credit to those who have fought alongside me and, you know, help me with some of these decisions that I've, I've had to make as a part of this team. It's a team effort. So it's, that's what we're here for. Like, we're all doing this together, man. So I, I, I just appreciate the love. Yeah. I, 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 I might foyer over into TikTok one day because like my jam is a uh, Instagram because it's the most convenient for me or whatever because yeah. I make content for me and my observations and whatnot all that because Walmart's my jam so I'm always in the Walmart and uh yeah <laughs> on Instagram is like I like to go down the alcohol aisle because people make interesting choices and whatnot you see like they'll come down there the most perplexing one to me was like all right, you've been to the deli section, right? You know, they got select meats in there. You can tell them you want, you know, some uh, honey, lemon, pepper, ham sliced up and put in a bag so you can go buy it and go home and make sandwiches. So right. somebody made the conscious decision to go to the deli, say, hey, I want this type of ham. Had the guy pull it out of the display case, slice it up real thin, put it in the wrapper, put the stamp on it, weigh it, tell them how much it is and hand it to them. And they went to the alcohol aisle and just left it amongst the Budweiser and the Smirnoff ice to presumably take a six pack or something home. So I was like, that's why I walk up and down the aisles to see what choices people made. I see yeah. pie crust, whole turkeys, um, nail polish, um, some feminine wash and some caulk, which was together. So I hope that was or don't hope that was the same person. Uh, so I like to make up those stories in my head, like what were the decisions was. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's, it's, you know, you got, you got to make a choice. You know, can I afford this delectable ham or do I, I need this money to buy a bottle of Ponson? You never know. Mm -hmm. It's, it, you just, it just depends on, you know, what the bank account is looking like, you know, sometimes my checking and my savings, he, you know, my checking and my savings. See, the thing is, my checking, <laughs> was like, you, you never know. So it just depends on where you're That's at. That's why they that call time. it checking because I keep checking it to see if some more money going to come up in there. 
<laughs> you, you're speaking truths right now, my brother. You're speaking truths. Oh, man. But, like, because of your success with uh, TikTok and other social media outlets and whatnot, it's gotten you local news coverage and everything. You're, you're on the bump. I think you got some recognition from AEW and everything. So, I mean, what has that been like for you? How is that just like blowing your mind right now? <laughs> it's it's crazy, man. Like the recognition that I've gotten for several different things that I do on social media is insane. You know, it all started with I did this remix of the ABC's Corn song Coming Undone. Mm-hmm. And uh Jonathan Davis, the lead singer of Corn saw it, liked it, posted it to his Instagram story. That got articles written all over the world about me and about my profession and about what I was doing on social media. Mm-hmm. So then after that, uh, WWE sees my TikToks and they're like, you know, these are pretty cool. Would you like to come on our morning show, The Bumps? Like, Heck yeah, I'd like to come on. And, uh, you know, I love all of those guys, man. Matt, and Kayla and Ryan and, and uh, uh, Evan are just amazing. And, you know, they're, they've all been very supportive of everything uh, that I've been doing uh, with the WWE and the entrances and stuff like that. Uh, getting to do the bump and then Samoa Joe watching my version of his entrance on the bump live. <laughs> and then just this past Wednesday, them showing one of my tweets on the bump during uh, their interview with Ali. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just all been really cool. And then getting tweeted out by the WWE on Fox Twitter page uh, uh, multiple times. Uh, uh, Bleacher Report, Mm -hmm. their wrestling page on Instagram has shared several of my videos. And I've been very thankful for that. And then, of course, the AEW uh, mentions and duets uh, to if to the Orange Cassidy entrance uh, that happened over the summer where they uh, did a, a stitch of that and then the uh, Adam Cole entrance and the uh, Jungle Boy entrance and the Mox entrance uh, just getting that kind of recognition from so many different you know media outlets and then being on uh, Cedric the Entertainer's uh, uh, clip show on CBS, the greatest at home videos uh, for one of my comedy videos. It's just all really cool, man, to get that kind of recognition and love from so many different media outlets. And then, of course, the, the local news, uh, you know, thanks to uh, KTBE and KNOE here uh, in the area for their support and, you know, just coming out and and, you know, letting people know, you know, this, there, there's this guy in our area, you know, to the point where I do, uh, I'm a teacher, but I'm also the crossing guard in my school. So I'll be outside in the morning and people will pass by in their cars and be like, hey, man, thank you for, I saw you on the news. You that TikTok guy. Man, I, love, I, I watched that Goldberg video a million times over, man. Thank you for what you do. We love your stuff. It's just, it's all really cool, man. And then the kids, the kids at the school, just, you know, jaws dropping, just me walking through the hall. Like, hey, you're the TikTok teacher. Yeah, that's me. So it's all really cool. And uh, I'm just, I'm blessed and highly favored, man. I'm very thankful for the opportunity to have all of this stuff happen. And I just look forward to what's next. Word, word. Uh before we wrap and whatnot, we're going to s- skirt back over to some more wrestling. Uh, AEW, you mm-hmm. were speaking about uh, a name just popped into my head, Adam Cole, and then also uh, Brian Danielson and all that stuff. What was your thoughts and feelings about those major signings with AEW? N- not, not, not to mention CM Punk, but just those two in particular. Now, the the CM Punk, when I'll say real quick, as soon as I heard the rumors, I was like, I believe it when I see it. Yeah, then when I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is pretty dope. I mean, you, you can't, you know, as, as many times as you've heard all this news, people say, you know, CM Punk this, CM Punk that. Uh, for Now that he's actually back and, uh, you know, you can see the love that he has for it and the smile that he has on his face, he's really having fun and enjoying himself, and that's so good to see. 
And, you know, with Cole and Danielson, uh, I was very happy to see them to become part of something that they really seem like they enjoy. Mm-hmm. You know, that was the best part of it for me is that they seem to be really happy with where they are right now. You know, Danielson just wants to compete. Yes. And compete at a high level and, uh, you know, have some of the matches that he's wanted to have for years and just wasn't able to do. You know, he's got Minoru Suzuki tonight. Like, that's... Mm-hmm. that's I'm ready wild. for all that. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, just scoop it up and put it on the plate for me that's and allow cool. me to have second. I'm, I'm, I'm all with it. Uh, and, you know, Adam Cole being back with all of his best friends and uh, his wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's just, it, it's really cool to see. And plus, it's it's given us an opportunity to have, to see some really fantastic contests. And, uh, you know, guys really at the height of their career. The Danielson Omega match, of course, mm-hmm. was just absolute, just money. Uh, but I, you know, when you look at stuff like Adam Cole versus Jungle Boy, I thought it was, an, it was a really good and competitive match and uh, really showcased both guys uh, really well. And uh, Adam Cole's match with uh, Frankie Kazarian, I think, was really good, too. Uh, just getting the chance to see some of these matches and see these guys compete at a high level is, you know, it's just really cool. And I think, again, it just shows the kind of alternatives that professional wrestling has now and the opportunity to see some re- – it's just a great time to be a wrestling fan. Yes, it is. So it's just, it's just really awesome to be a part of it. Uh, we talked about NXT 2.0 and all the potential young stars that they have over there. What do you think about the ones that we have within AEW with, like, Lee Moriarty and uh, Daniel Garcia and uh, people in the like? I'm so happy that they're giving these guys and girls an opportunity to really showcase their talents and, you know, be on a national stage, you know, love me some Lee Moriarty, you know, the tiger style, love, yeah. love me some Lee Moriarty, uh, Kiera Hogan, oh, yeah. um, and uh, top steals, uh, just, just some really, really great talents. Uh, that AEW has now, Powerhouse Hobbs, mm-hmm. I really like, and just you know some uh, Ricky Starks, man, Ricky yeah. Stark, just so just uh, the list. I can sit here all day and name these people, and just the list goes on and on and on mm-hmm. of all of this great young talent that AEW has right now, mm-hmm. and they're giving them the opportunity to showcase themselves on a bunch of different platforms whether it be on Dynamite or Rampage or Dark or Elevation, you know, you have the opportunity to really just show, showcase your talent and show people who you are. And I, I'm, I love every minute of it. And I look forward to seeing how these talents are built up, you know, and to see, and again, and, you know, just on a personal level, to see my boy Leo Rush uh, come back and to do what he's doing now, uh, not just mm-hmm. with, you know, the in-ring stuff, but with, you know, the LBO Leo and all of this. It's just really cool. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to see where AEW takes all of this in the future. I said, we, you forgot to mention one of the most anticipated in-ring debuts for AEW, and that's going to be whenever Hook <laughs> locks up with somebody. <laughs> Send Hook. Send him. <laughs> Send Hook. Do you know that there's a, a Twitter account that's follows called, me. I think, like Sin Hook or whatever, and that's all they play is that clip? I, I'm pretty sure Sin Hook follows me. I love Sin Hook. <laughs> all they do is play that clip over and over again. Sin Hook. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm with it. Love Sin Hook. Mm-hmm. And if Sin Hook doesn't follow me, you need to. If you see this, follow me, Sin Hook. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been great to chat with you, fellow Louisianian. And, um, let everybody know where they can find you on social media and what you got going on and coming up and whatnot. Uh, Rob, I appreciate it, man. Uh, Mr. Professor 318 on all social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch. Uh, you can also search it on Facebook and then you can find the Facebook fan page. Uh, you can search it on YouTube and find my YouTube as well. 
Uh, it's all there. And if you go to uh, TikTok or Instagram or Twitter, you can go to the link tree in my bio mm -hmm. and access all of these different pages and a couple of extra stuff as well. Uh, the merch should be coming back fairly soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll keep an eye out for that as well. Uh, and if nobody told you today, you are loved, you are appreciated, you are important, you are enough exactly as you are, and always remember to be great. Ow. Ow. <laughs> right in the heartstrings. But as it is for every guest of the Random Rambles with Rob, the door is always open, except for this one right here, because I got to keep it quiet, uh, for you to come back to promote your next big thing or just to shoot the shit. <laughs> I would love to. You know, it's been a pleasure. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. And uh, hopefully next time the Wi-Fi will be better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can only hope. Fingers crossed.